All right. Hello and welcome everybody to One Stop Business Workshop. My name is Diana Chu. I'm a compliance officer at the Canadian Audiovisual Certification Office, also known as CAFCO, and I'm a moderator for today. Before we begin, we wish to acknowledge those Indigenous nations on whose land we live and work. We're gathering virtually from across the country, and since land acknowledgements are specific to each region, we encourage you to visit the Native Land digital website to identify the First Nation territories on which you are located. This session is being presented to you from the territories of many nations, including the Anishinaabe, the Mississauga of the Credits, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat peoples, as well as the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. Today, you'll be hearing from Aaron Unrah, Catherine Middleton, and Taza Decker, who will be giving an introduction on how to work with Canadian unions and guilds. A copy of the presentation will be available after the session. Aaron is a manager of agreement administration at the Writers Guild of Canada, where, he's, where he is responsible for overseeing both the administration and the enforcement of WGC's collective agreement. And he brings with us today over 20 years of experience in Canada's film and television business. Catherine is with the Directors Guild of Canada and National Directors Division, and is responsible for DGC Western Council director right acquisition fees, contract negotiations for directors, and so much more. And Teza has been with the Alliance of Canadian Cinema, Television, and Radio Artists, ACTRA, since 2006, starting as a commercial business representative at ACTRA Alberta, and now in her current role as industry relations at ACTRA Toronto, where she reaches out to producers to cultivate work opportunities for her members. Now, during our 30 minute session, I will be asking our presenters questions that you've provided during registration. Uh, you can also email me your questions during the session. My email address is in your evite for the session. And we're extremely lucky to have three representatives from three major unions here with us today. So please do take advantage of this and send me your questions. Um, so let's start with the very first question. It's a two-parter. Um, what are these guilds and unions and uh, what do you guys do? Thanks. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, my name is Aaron Onra, Manager of Agreement Administration at the Writers Guild of Canada. So the Writers Guild, or WGC, is a labor organization representing professional screenwriters in the Canadian film and television industry uh, who write English language scripts primarily uh, for Canadian producers. We have over 2,400 members and one national office in Toronto. Uh, so our goals are to help writers earn a fair wage, um, to protect their moral rights, and to ensure that writing credits are properly afforded. We want to strengthen the industry, uh, not just for screenwriters, but as a whole. So, so to that end, we spend a lot of time and effort on policy and lobbying so that the major players, including the government primarily, understand the plight of screenwriters in Canada and how, they how the decisions that they make affecting, um, affect those working in film and TV. The WGC has one main collective agreement called the Independent Production Agreement, or IPA. Uh, every two to three years, hopefully three, uh, we bargain with the producers associations to refine the agreement and we endeavor to uh, increase the minimum fees and the rights and conditions under which our members work. Uh, our current IPA was negotiated with the CMPA and is in effect until June 30th of 2022. So a lot of producers ask, um, what is the first step? And so before hiring a WGC member, producers must first become signatory to the IPA. Uh, there's a form to fill out. Uh, it's called the Voluntary Recognition Agreement or VRA. We love our acronyms. Uh, it's very simple. Um, you fill in the blanks, um, sign it, send it in. We'll send you back a fully executed copy. That's it, you're signatory. Uh, there's no fee There's no fee associated with actually becoming a signatory producer, very simple process. Uh, so once the producer is signatory, uh, they can engage WGC writers, story editors, and story consultants at that point. Um, it's important to know that the WGC represents all writers and story editors on a signatory production, uh, even those writers or story editors who aren't members of the WGC. This way, uh, all writers working on a production are equally afforded the protection of the guild. And we consider that a very important part of what we do. 
Uh, in addition to the fees, producers also contribute insurance and retirement to the writers, uh, which currently sits at 12%. Um, this is one of those uh, benefits that our members uh, greatly appreciate about being part of the guild. Um, you know, pretty much all the uh, guilds and, and unions uh, will have something like that. There's, of course, also admin fees, which change depending on whether or not the producer is a CMPA member. Uh, for those who are interested in becoming a WGC member, uh, there is an application available online. You first need a contract with a signatory producer. Uh, but for those uh, who don't have that at this point, we actually do have some incentive programs for writers to join without one. And the details for that are available on our website. Uh, we also understand that there are a lot of in independent producers out there who are working with very limited budgets. So to help them out, uh, we do have incentive programs for low budget features and also for TV series that are 15 minutes or less that are gonna be streaming online. Um, that's one of the things that we do to, um, you know, help make sure that our writers can still work for producers who are, are working with very limited funds. If there's any one thing that I can stress um, is that we want you to contact us if you have any questions. Feel free to call or email anytime. Uh, we try to make ourselves as available as possible. Our full contact list is available on our website. Uh, the industrial department is generally who you would uh, be reaching out to if you have these questions. Um, we have the director of our department, myself, the manager of agreement administration. I probably handle a, a lot of the questions that are coming straight to the guild. Uh, and we also have our agreement administrators or stewards uh, who cover different portfolios, features, TV series, uh, you know, one hour and, and half hour variety, et cetera, animation. Um, now, uh, so like I said, the full contact list is available on our website. Uh, speaking of, uh, definitely make sure that you check our website out. The full uh, independent production agreement is available there as well as our uh, contact list, like I mentioned, uh, and resources for both producers and writers um, when things go back to normal or however close to normal as they may be. We also try to have um, events, uh, writers talking television, uh, which I suppose at this point, uh, I think we're looking into possibly doing those virtually. Uh, but we're, uh, you know, uh, we always have something um, that our, our members uh, can check out. And um, also definitely check out our member directory. Uh, it's a great way for producers to, excuse me, to search for uh, and find writers that best suit the needs of the production. So sign up for that if you're a producer uh, looking for any writers. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, it's uh, Catherine Middleton. Would you like me to just jump right in? Uh, yes, go ahead, Catherine. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm Catherine Middleton. I'm with the Directors Guild of Canada. We are a national labor organization that represents um, over 5,000 key creative and logistical personnel in the screen-based industries covering all areas of direction, design, production, and editing, including directors, obviously, assistant directors, the art department, production management, production coordinators, locations, accounting departments, and editing. Representation of these categories differs from DGC council to council across Canada. And in addition to negotiating and administering collective agreements, the DGC also lobbies extensively on um, issues of concern for our members, including things like Canadian content conditions, CRTC regulations, ensuring that funding is maintained for Canadian film and television programming. And obviously um, over these last few months, we have spent a lot of time working with industry extensively um, in creating protocols for returning to work. Uh, the DGC um, was described to me a number of years ago as being very much like the NHL. The, um, we have a national office and we have district councils across the country and we operate a little bit like um, the league and the teams. So when you'll be dealing with a um, district council of the Directors Guild of Canada um, based in the jurisdiction where you are producing your production, you'll be dealing with that particular team. We go on to the next slide. So the DGC formally negotiates collective agreements that dictate the rights and responsibilities for both DGC members and producers. And those clauses um, include job classifications and job descriptions, um, 
workday rest periods and meal breaks, travel, health and safety, retirement and health plan benefits, and much more are included in these contracts. And then the rates that you would pay DGC members are determined by the type of production and the budget level from high to low budget. So whether that be uh, a feature film, a television, um, motion picture, episodic television, or new media, they're all specifically broken down by uh, genre and the budget level range um, all the way from what we include as tier A to F and tier F is our lowest budget and those rates are negotiable but just cannot fall below minimum wage and the director's rates um, are a percentage of the budget. The standard agreement between the DGC and the CMPA, which is the Canadian Media Producers Association, uh, contain terms and conditions negotiated for production in the Atlantic region, in Newfoundland and Labrador, in Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Alberta. The DGC in British Columbia negotiates a separate collective agreement and that's with the BC branch of the Canadian Media Producers Association and the American Producers Association. In Quebec, the Guild negotiates a number of different contracts for different types of production and categories with different producer organizations in English and in French. And um, I suggest that you refer to the DGC website um, for further information um, that I couldn't possibly even explain to you in the entire half an hour that we have today. The DGC also has a contract with the National Film Board. Just as Aaron had mentioned, um, I think the most important thing is if you have any questions or any intentions in producing a film that would utilize DGC members, please feel free to call us. Um, I will include the information for the contact for each of the different district councils, but you can find all of that information as well on the DGC website. Um, we have the national DGC website um, with um, that includes all the contacts for all of the um, different district councils. Um, we have, um, again, we want producers to be comfortable contacting the DGC. There is a myth that um, working with unions is difficult and expensive, and we have tried to do everything we possibly can to dispel those kinds of um, misunderstandings because we are really um, trying to create opportunities for our members. We don't want to stop our members from working. So at the end of the day, guilds and unions, I think, can provide a service to producers. We can provide access to um, professional and experienced crew, people who can efficiently and effectively do the job, which um, at the end of the day can be a great savings to the producer, as opposed to it being an additional cost for production. Um, we also negotiate contracts that provide um, predictability in the industry and stability, which is really important, particularly now. Um, we also work with um, emerging producers all the time. And we have made a concerted effort to bring into the Guild emerging um, and new and emerging filmmakers. Um, and we often have directors who are also producing their own productions. And we've done a, a lot of work in um, ensuring that we are the collective voice of filmmakers in the industry and have been um, encouraging these emerging filmmakers to um, be part of the organization and um, connecting with filmmakers across, um, connecting and supporting filmmakers across the country. Um, we also provide exceptions to the formal contracts for ultra low budget productions. And that's uh, a term that we refer to as dispensation. And a dispensation provides an opportunity for someone who is a DGC member to contact the Directors Guild and to ask for permission to work on a non-signatory. So if you have a ultra low budget production and you are looking to hire a DGC member, then the member would contact the Directors Guild, let us know what the production was all about. And um, these are often 
dispensation is often determined by budget level. Um, and then we could start a conversation with the producer. We would either reach out to you or in that situation, uh, you could reach out to us. But it is the individual member that is granted permission to work on a non-signatory agreement as opposed to a production. So a production is not granted dispensation, individual members are. Um, so again, um, I think what um, is most important, as um, Aaron had said, we want to be um, uh, open and um, approachable. And if you have any questions, we would be happy to start a discussion and to answer those. Uh, we don't bite. So thanks very much. Thanks so much, Aaron and Catherine. That was fantastic. Um, so we are now talking about the workers that are in front of the camera. So ACTRA is the union representing performers in recorded media across Canada. We have 27,000 members from coast to coast to coast, and we have branch offices all across the country. ACTRA Toronto is the largest branch of the union, and we assert jurisdiction all across Ontario, with the exception of the capital region. So if you are tuning in from Ottawa, you would get in touch with ACTRA Ottawa. ACTRA has three main objectives as a labor organization organizing and outreach, um, bargaining and advocacy. So organizing and outreach is really crucial because we want to connect with content creators uh, of all sorts. So whether you're you know, an indie video game developer or a web series creator, or uh, you wanna produce an audiobook, we want to connect with you to let you know the process for engaging ACTRA talent because ACTRA members want to work with you. So that's a big part of what we do. As far as bargaining, that just refers to the ne negotiation of collective agreements and Aaron and Catherine both uh, touched on the collective agreements they have in their organizations, and I will speak a little bit about that later. Advocacy work is very important as well. Canadian content is something that's very near and dear to ACTRA's heart. Uh, we want to be sure that uh, we have more Canada on our screens and more storytellers telling Canadian stories. Um, because again, our members want to work on that content, and that content also needs to be discoverable. Right, so uh, we should be able to watch that content. Um, ACTRA performers uh, volunteer on various committees. So I'm gonna speak a little bit about the work done by ACTRA Toronto's Diversity and Inclusion Committee. So this committee uh, reaches out and lets content creators know uh, that we have culturally and physically diverse performers and um, you know, they want the industry to become more inclusive. And also, you know, these members want to work with you. They want a chance to audition and help you tell your story. Um, they do such amazing work in this committee. Uh, for example, they have the Sandy Ross Awards, which are given out every year and help celebrate uh, individuals and companies that are dedicated to inclusion. So these are folks that not only talk the talk about inclusion, but walk the walk as well. Uh, so uh, previous winners are Thunderbird Entertainment uh, Production Company for Kim's Convenience, uh, as well as Floyd Kane, who is the creator of Digstown. Um, they also sponsor film festivals like Regent Park Film Fest, um, uh, Real Asian Film Festival, Imagine Native Film Festival, the Toronto Black Film Festival, just to name a few. So I just want to give a quick shout out to the co-chairs of the Inclusivity and D Diversity Committee, Samora Smallwood and Lisa Michelle Cornelius, as well as our diversity advocate, Jania Lauzon. So if you'd like to find out uh, more about this committee and the work that they do, please visit actratoronto.com. Uh, so moving on, the next question that we get a lot is, you know, what's the benefit to working with actor talent? To put it quite simply, actor performers are professionals. They are skilled and they have experience and they know how to bring your script to life. So when you want professional talent, contact Actra. So if we could move to the next slide, please. ACTRA has various collective agreements that cover all types of content. As an example, we have uh, the National Commercial Agreement that covers um, advertising content, and we negotiate that with the um, Institute of Communications Agency and the Association of Canadian Advertisers. Um, we also have an audio-only agreement called the Audio Code. We have broadcaster agreements, and I'm going to speak a little bit about the Independent Production Agreement. We negotiate the IPA with the Canadian Media Producers Association, and um, um, here it is, it's our green book. Uh, so the IPA covers long form content, film, television, digital media, animation, et cetera. Um, so in this agreement include wages and working conditions and rates, depending on the type of content that's being created. Um, but I do recommend 
going to ACTRA's website. You can go to actratoronto.com or actra.ca to take a look at the IPA to get a, an idea of um, the information that's included therein. Because in the IPA, there's actually low budget language included. So there's actually a section in this agreement called the Canadian Independent Production Incentive Program. We love our acronyms at ACTRA, sorry, by the way. Uh, so CPIP, which again, the purpose of that language is to encourage more uh, Canadian domestic production to engage ACTRA talent and they have um, uh, incentivized rates included therein. So I mentioned that ACTRA Toronto is the largest branch and we assert jurisdiction all across Ontario with the exception of the Ottawa region. Um, each branch of ACTRA is autonomous and we do have branches all across Canada. So each branch of ACTRA, so if you are a filmmaker living in Calgary or Halifax or if you're uh, watching this from British Columbia, we have offices in those locations and um, we have micro budget agreements for indie filmmakers uh, at each branch. So for example, if you are in British Columbia, you'd reach out to the Union of British Columbia Performers slash ACTRA Vancouver for their indie language. Um, and at ACTRA Toronto's jurisdiction, please get in touch with us for information on our micro budget agreements. Um, to reiterate uh, what uh, my brothers and sisters at the other unions have said, we want to hear from you. ACTRA members want to work on your content. So please don't be shy. Please reach out to us. Uh, we would love to hear from you and be able to explain the various contracts that are available and how to engage our members. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Erin, Catherine, Tesa, for explaining to us the uh, important work that uh, you guys are doing and uh, how to engage. Um, we do have some questions. Um, so I, once again, if you have any questions, uh, email me. My email address is in your e-bind. Um, so one of the questions we had received, um, for a smaller production, how do you balance additional expenses of unionizing and trying to maintain your production quality and conditions? Um, who wants to take a stab at that? Uh, I can answer that um, for the uh, WGC side of things. Um, so, um, you know, it's... The WGC does exist to have minimum fees. So first of all, you know, um, it is important to understand that with, you know, paying a little bit more tends to come quality. That's, uh, you know, we, we all understand that, uh, you know, buying a Sony TV versus a Sony. Um, the, uh, the Guild though, um, you know, we, we do have some incentive programs, like I mentioned, for feature films, um, for budgets under 3 million, budgets under 1.2 million. Um, you know, there are ways to reduce the script fees significantly uh, to make it uh, much more affordable. We also have um, an incentive program for television series that are uh, intended for initially streaming online that are 15 minutes or less. So that's a way to do web series and those kinds of productions um, with negotiable fees in, in that case. And we also have across the board for all production types um, under the WGC, if anything is uh, sixty thousand dollars or less, um, either you know like a feature that's sixty thousand or less, or a short, or a TV series that's sixty thousand per less per episode, um, the fees are negotiable. You still have to pay insurance and retirement, but those fees uh, are negotiable. So that's one way to um, you know to be able to afford to hire our members uh, on a, a you know much smaller budget. And does uh, Catherine, does the Directors Guild of Canada have anything similar uh, in terms of fee? Is there always room for negotiation or? First one to do oh. it. I'm unmuted now. <laughs> um, someone has to be first. Uh, we do have uh, varying uh, budget levels. And as I had mentioned, our tier F is the lowest budget that we have. And so for feature films, for example, everything under $1.5 million would fall under our tier F. So that is um, negotiable rates for uh, everyone with the exclusion of the director um, and our fringes for the health plan and retirement um, would be, are reduced. Uh, from the what they would be on the higher tier level. Um, there are certain things like vacation fringes, which are um, provincial, so that we don't have the ability to negotiate anything lower than what the provincial minimum standards would be. Um, okay. And the director's fee is um, based on a percentage of the overall budget, and that at tier level is 2.75% of the budget, and that is for the director's fee, and that also includes all um, all rights acquisition. So it is, it can be a very reasonable approach 
to, um, to making something in that lower budget level. And as I mentioned um, before, the um, ultra low budget um, can be something that utilizes our members um, where they are working um, outside of the contract. I'm just going to, in uh, just some time, I'm just going to move on to the next question. And this one's actually for you, Teza. It's, uh, I don't know if you can uh, speak to this, right? But I mean, we're, we all know right now we're in this uh, COVID new normal situation. Um, so we received a question here saying that ACTRA had announced um, some layoffs. Uh, how does this affect COVID negotiations in future projects? Um, so... I think a really good resource for everyone to check out is actratoronto.com. We have a page on coronavirus updates, which is really important. We've been updating it constantly since, you know, since this whole thing started in March. Um, and we actually have launched a site, a, a page on that site to talk about, um, you know, safety protocols when we go back to work. And this is a really integral part of, of what we're doing, right? Because um, as we gear up to have the industry go back to work, we really want to be sure that people are safe. And performers are quite vulnerable in that they cannot be wearing PPP, PPE in a scene, as an example, uh, unless they're, you know, on a medical drama. So I do recommend to um, performers and content creators alike, please go check out actortoronto.com and our coronavirus uh, update page, because it does have a lot of really wonderful information on what going back to work is going to look like and how to ensure workers are safe. Um, as far as the staffing, yes, we have had a reduction in staff uh, simply because obviously production has been uh, on hold. Um, a lot of voice production, and uh, not a lot, but there has been some voice production that has gone forward during the shutdown uh, simply because uh, performers were able to record in their home studios for animation and video game content, as an example. Um, but again, uh, you know, we are going to be ready when we ramp up. And um, that doesn't, uh, if anyone is concerned about that, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. The staff are still working just with a reduced complement. So um, to ensure that performers are uh, getting that service and production is also getting that service as well. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, someone's also mentioned that there's a few freelancer unions that are popping up. Uh, an example here is Unifor. Um, does anyone have any advice on working with these freelance unions? Would it be similar to working with you guys or? Perhaps we can swing back to Aaron. Do you have uh, any thoughts on this? Um, I, I have to be honest, I'm not entirely sure the specifics of, of dealing with that. I'm um, really just an expert on the WGC, unfortunately, um, so I, I'm not sure if somebody else has uh, anything to contribute on that. Okay. Well, why don't we move to the next one then? Um, so this one's also about um, unionizing. Um, do you guys encourage non-union uh, BIPOC, so Black, Indigenous, people of color, uh, to unionize? Or, I mean, I think, um, Teza, you had mentioned that ACTRA has sort of like a, a, a pocket for this. Um, is there any advice you guys have or thoughts on um, non-union BIPOC to unionize? Um, so I would recommend uh, definitely for BIPOC folks to check out actortoronto.com and look at for our committee page, which has information on our diversity and inclusion committee. And you can actually reach out to our co-chairs and our diversity advocate via that site. Um, you know, ACTRA wants performers to join our union because there is strength in numbers and there's solidarity uh, in the labor organization. Um, so we have advice on our website on, um, you know, you know, how to become a member of ACTRA. And of course we would encourage performers to uh, aim to join ACTRA. And, um, you know, we, we really, at ACTRA, we say diversity is our strength and we want to uh, welcome performers and help answer any questions that we can. So actortoronto.com, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We also have a lot of really great information on actortoronto.com, including a list of talent agents in the jurisdiction because getting representation is very important to ensure that you're getting those auditions. Thank you very much, Teza. Um, we'll try to fit another question here. Um, does being part of a union or guild act as a job pool or to help you get jobs or hired? I know because you mentioned that you are, or oh, in your biography, you are uh, actively trying to create opportunities. Uh, when we uh, bring this question over to Catherine, um, how does being part of 
Directors Guild Canada, how are you helping your members um, get hired or is it like being part of the pool? Um, yes, um, the Directors Guild um, have uh, Within our ranks, um, our members are free to work in any category. There is no um, seniority or any of those kinds of things. We have production lists that we generate um, in each of the different district councils, which are um, on all of our websites. So um, if the um, those involved in productions are not reaching out to our members directly. Um, our members can also reach out to productions directly to um, submit their resumes or to get in touch with department heads um, uh, to find out more information. So we, um, as a, a labor organization, we have um, membership requirements. We're providing training all the time. Um, we recognize members upgrading in certain positions so that um, when we have uh, producers who are coming to us who are looking for individuals in certain categories, we're providing them with people who have a certain level of experience and expertise, and that is um, mutually beneficial for all of us. So with the incredible increase in the level of production in the last few years, it has been, um, we've increased our membership as well because um, our members work in a particular category and then they're recognized as having a level of proficiency in that category um, and, and can upgrade. So we've been bringing in a lot of new members at a lot of different levels over the last couple of years um, just to meet the incredibly increased demand for content that we've been producing. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. So this, uh, that 30 minutes passed really fast. That's a wrap, um, unfortunately. Thank you so much, Erin, Catherine, Taza for uh, educating us on uh, unions and guilds. I've learned a lot. Um, and to our audience, uh, if you didn't get a chance to address your question, we will be posting some resources after the session. So hopefully some of your answers will be, or questions will be addressed that way. Um, we hope that you found today's session useful and that you'll be able to join us at another one-stop business workshop. Sessions continue each weekday to 2 p.m. Eastern time until July 3rd. Our next session is on Monday, which will feature my colleague Hiba Kesh, who will answer for us the age-old question, tax credit, what are they? Um, so I hope to see you then. Um, until then, have a great weekend. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.